what happened. Joe Smith lands a left hook, another left hook, and then... Well, the big push, Jim. Yeah. Rolls it out and cop kicks through the ropes. That will hurt him. Yeah, the right hand was huge. That will finish it. And that was a big push through the ropes. He landed on his head. That's pretty hurt. remarkable that he's still conscious. Yes, that's what hurt him. Better look from this angle. Right hand was huge. Another left hook. Another left hook. Through the ropes onto his head. So the official 20 count did take place. So Smith's mother celebrates her son's knockout victory. What a credential for the record of the young heavyweight from Long Island who is still a construction worker member of Construction Workers Local Union 66 in Melville, New York. The light heavyweight. But he's no more, he's no more an ordinary Joe. That's right. No more ordinary Joe. It's round number eight. Hopkins sustained an injury due to a legal blow. He fell out of the ring and Suffered an injury, therefore we declare your winner by TKO victory. He is still WBC International Light Heavyweight Champion, the days, Joe Smith Jr. So Joe Smith Jr. gets it done. A technical knockout victory over Bernard Hopkins. Bernard, thanks for, Bernard, thank you for talking under difficult circumstances. Um, what just happened? Hey, Max, I was throwing, I was throwing, uh, I think I was throwing a right hand or, or, um, a combination, and then using the rope as an offensive defense like I'm known for, and I made a miss, and I think I, I, I believe I was frustrating him up to that round with a couple of just making him miss and touching him to the body, and every now and then he gets an overhand right in, which was only a big punch, and, um, he got frustrated, Max. He got frustrated, and when we got in the clinch, and he might have got hit with a glazed right hand or a left hook, and going through the momentum, Max said, no, he's, he shoved me out of the ring, and I tried to grab it on the way out, and I went straight through grabbing. I, I believe I hit my head, but I didn't go out. But I hit my head first, and my ankle got hit when I hit the ground, a twist. A, the doctor said it's swollen on the right side of my ankle on the right-hand side. Were you aware? The ice on the other side, y'all. I got the ice on the left side. And on the outside right. Were you aware that... Were you aware that you had 20 seconds to get back in the ring by rule once you were out of the ring? Yeah, but I couldn't get on my... I couldn't stand up on my feet. But nobody said 20 seconds like that. He said, can you go? Can you continue? And he said, is your ankle all right? And I said, no. And he said, all right. And he said, okay, what you want to do? And I said, let's go back. And he said, all right, can you walk? I said, yeah, but I can't box on it because my leg is throbbing. I felt it doing this like a bad toothache. Do you have been a, you've been a, like, like, you know, when you get hit with a low blow, you got, I guess, you know, you said 20 seconds or whatever to get in the ring. But, you know, I had a choice to make. And I guess the, the referee, you know, wanted to make the choice for me. But I know for a fact that if I wouldn't have got pushed out of the ring after I made a miss, the second half of the fight, when I'm known for coming back, I'm known for, not that I was down multiple rounds, but I believe that he was starting to fade out, and I was starting to come on strong and making him miss, and that was taking taking a toll on him, because he's a big a big swinger. I know that it's going to be dangerous early in the fight, and I know that I had a chin that can hold up to anybody's punch, as you've seen. And um, he got frustrated. It reminded me of the Robert Island fight, when I was... Um, starting to give him a boxing lesson that was making me miss and frustrating. And next thing you know, I'm out pushed out of the ring with Mills Lane, who's refereeing the fight, like the famous Mills Lane. So that's to me like a deja vu where at least I had a chance to go ahead and redeem no, so, so you know the replay doesn't show that you were pushed out. But 
but it, it shows that that you kind of fell out. It, it, I think his forearm was on you, but it wasn't like a blatant he pushed you out. It looked like you got caught with something and, and you, you slipped through the ropes. Um, you you seem very... The momentum of, of both things, the momentum of what you said and the momentum of me backing up against him. You, you seem very... Like, we've seen you lose to Kovalev. You didn't seem as upset as this. And when I came in, I overheard you say into this locker room right now, I overheard you say, I can't believe they're going to give him a TKO. It seems that that is bothering you right now, the fact that that goes down on your record as a stoppage loss. But the reason I reason um, I said that is because I'm I'm really still in shock. Like, y'all, they're going to give him the fight. Knowing that if the replay showed that even if his elbow touched me and he throwing a punch and he's leaning on me, then I went through the ropes. I didn't dive through the ropes. You see, the momentum took me through the ropes. And I think I hit my head. Does everybody see they heard a the thump hit my head? But I was more or less worried about my ankle um, than, than my head until I realized later seconds that I did hit my head. But no, Max, I won't go holler and scream and jump and say, oh, and, you know, and all this stuff like that because to me, I, I believe everybody's seen what was going on, maybe I get a chance to go ahead and see if I could fight on it, which I couldn't, or see what the referee was going to do. But that's, that's why I was more, even if they were to call it a no contest, even if they were to call it, you know, um, whatever, but not a loss, because I don't think, I mean, I don't think that it was warranty like that. Maybe, you know, maybe you see the rules after four rounds, after five rounds, but this was definitely a momentum pushing me from his body, form, or shoulder or punch in the form. Look, Bernard, what definitely to me, um, and I don't know what everybody else seen, but I know I was leaning on the ropes and he threw a punch and it sort of glazed and I backed up on the ropes next time. I know his body is on me and I went through the ropes. You, you are attempting to do something today that no one's ever done in the history of boxing. Beat a, a world-class fighter who's coming off a win at the age of almost 52. That would have been a record by some measure. And this was billed as your last fight. But given it is your last fight, you will not fight again? No. Why not? One, one reason is, Max, because I promise I wouldn't. And I'm uh, enjoying myself color commentating with your handsome face and Jim Lampley. But, you know, I think that when you come to a point in life where you know, you know when it's, it's, it's final because there's nothing else to do, in the game of boxing as far as making history and doing certain things. And also um, spending time with my daughter right here, as you told the NYU. And then other things going on in my life, Max. And again, along with the HBO family, um, Golden Boy, can't forget that. Um, I'm well, well, well uh, um, happy in, in my life of retirement. This is billed as the final one. Controversy, draw, split, whatever you want to call it, win, knockout, or less. It doesn't matter. Um, I believe that the crowd and the fans know for a fact that um, I went out like a soldier and I always fought the toughest and the baddest um, fighter in the era that I boxed or even before or after that. So yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm fine with that. But I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, I agree, but it is what, what it looks like or what it is. And, and I know what happened. I'm not in denial. Bernard, Jones it... Is tough. Jones, Jones is a tough, strong, heavy-handed puncher. Don't have a lot of mechanics with him as far as technique and skill. Strong and, you know, can come forward. But I think that Max, knowing people know my style, knowing I'm not a fast starter, um, this was the rounds that I know that I was about to go ahead and make something happen. We've covered that, and, and, and we got to get the business done. But I just want to tell you that if this is indeed your last fight, and it sounds like it is... It was a pleasure covering your career, one of the genuine all-time greats of the game, and it was an honor to cover your last fight. Jim? Bernard Hopkins got knocked out of the ring and knocked out of boxing tonight by Joe Smith Jr., who found a home for the right hand uh, beginning in round one, hurt Bernard Hopkins on uh, in numerous times during the fight, and got Bernard Hopkins out of there uh, a little bit over the halfway point 
in the 12 round bout tonight in at the forum in Inglewood, California. Hopkins looked every bit his age and Joe Smith while he exerted a lot of energy trying to get Hopkins out of there and you could see the fight possibly changing if it went into the later rounds. The bottom line is Bernard Hopkins didn't throw enough, he didn't land enough. He landed his fair share of shots, but not fair enough as Smith kept the pressure on, got Bernard against the ropes, landed a, a solid right hand, solid left hand, threw a combination, and as Bernard was falling, was beginning to fall through the ropes, Smith landed a big left hand, which pretty much helped Bernard to the floor. And Bernard landed, uh, fell backwards, and hit the floor with the back of his head. So head first, not the top of his head, but the back of his head. And I, I just got to say one thing. I feel extremely bad for that forum floor in Los Angeles or Englewood, California tonight. Had a buddy that was locked up with Bernard Hopkins for a minute and Bernard's nickname in prison was Heads and if you see the cut over Joe Smith's eye due to a, a <laughs> An accidental on purpose headbutt by Bernard Hopkins. And I'm sure there's a dent in the, <laughs> the forum floor in Englewood, California after Head's head hit the floor. So, uh, Bernard tried to be crafty as, as he has been over the years. Uh, he did throw the lead right hand, which scored a, a couple of times. However, uh, youth served Joe Smith, and he came, he saw, he conquered, he did what he had to do, and now Joe Smith's a player. He got the, he won pretty much what, mm, more than likely, for your, uh, for your casual fan, and for your, um, People who don't, who, who boxing viewership is, is limited to maybe premier boxing champions as well as HBO Showtime. More than likely the uh, upset of the year when he beat uh, Fofana. Um, and definitely I think a lot of people thought Hopkins would get it done tonight at least most of the people I spoke with so that's another feather a big feather in Joe Smith Jr's cap so are you having I mean Bernard Hopkins goes out a loser by knockout um, Bernard did claim that Smith should be disqualified and that the he was pushed out of the ring. I, I just don't see that on replay. And Bernard also hurt his ankle to the point where he couldn't. He could walk, but he couldn't move. And it wouldn't have been able to continue anyway. So uh, Bernard came out as he did way back in the day with the two, with the executioner mask on and the two guys on either side of him with hatchets in their hand and a uh, little throwback he used John David Jackson today as a trainer many years ago Bernard fired Bowie Fisher and he proclaimed that it had to do with Bowie's health he, Bowie was up there in age however when interviewed Bowie said that 
his health was fine and that Bernard was cheap, which I can give you a few stories about Bernard possibly being the cheapest man in the world. So, and he, for this fight, he fired uh, Nazim Richardson and word on the street, it had to do with money once again. So, Bernard Hopkins, the executioner, also known as the alien, knocked out tonight in what possibly <laughs> is his last fight by Joe Smith Jr.